Morning, Kal Kadosh, Chodesh Tov. Today's daf is daf Ein Tet Amud Aleph. Okay, so 7091. We're by the two dots, so it's a few lines down. It's two, four, six lines down. Six, seven lines down. Or, right, so we're talking about if somebody's going to take out the skins of an animal, right? She have sure that they dried it and they salted it. But it wasn't um, processed yet to take off the, to peel it. So they still can't write on it. So we said that the shiur, the measurement in order to be chayav, is kidei la'asot, to make like a small keys for a kamiya. Okay, a small amulet. So so comes Rav and he asks from Rav Nachman, hamotzi or bekama. How much do you have to be, right, to take out the skins? How much are you going to be chayav? If again, if it's not fitting for a cloth, meaning it's not fitting for a parchment to write on, so I'm a lake, it's run. So I don't understand. That's what we just learned to the Mishnah. The Mishnah said, right, or kedei lasot le kamiya. Enough skins that you're able to make for a kamiya, which means that as long as you're able to make a kamiya, that's it, you're going to be chayav. Fine. Hameabedo. Now, if you're going to salt it in order to preserve it, in order to make the skins, which is like the processing, the kama. Amale lo shnat, there's no difference. Again, it's a kamiya as well. Same measurement. La bedo bekama, right? If you're going to take it out in order to la bedo, in order to process it, but you didn't do it yet, how much are you going to be chayav? Amale lo shnat, again, you're, there's no difference. Meaning in all these three questions, there's no difference whether be'emet, right? You are taking it out, which you're salting it, which is the ibud, or you're taking it to get it me'abed. Remember, me'abed is to processing it in order to make it fitting. Okay? It's all the same measurement. Umena teimra. So how do you know that the shi'ur of the ibud is like the me'ubad, is the same? Meaning, how do you know that it's the same shi'ur? How do you know it's the same measurement, whether it's you're taking it to get processed, or it's already processed? How do you know? So answers the gemara, kiditra, we learned it in Amishna. Hamla ben. If you're going to whiten a wool, which means they used to take the wool and they used to put it into like a dye in order to whiten it. Hamnapets, if you're going to uh, brew, uh, not to brew it, to comb it in order to take out all the impurities. That tovea, if you're going to color the dye, you write color this thread with dye. That tovea, you're going to make it into threads. Shiure kimlo rocha vasit kaful. The shiur is like twice of the distance of the etzbalma when it's distance from each other. Here it is. Um, let's see what does that mean. It says here, twice from the, you have to do two times, right, where it is the etzba to the ama, when you distance it from each other. So look, this is the etzba. The etzba is the index finger. The ma is the middle finger, okay? And then this is the, the gudal, the thumb, okay? So you have to do twice the distance from the etzba to the ama, okay? That's what you're doing. So you basically take from the etzba to the ama, which is called seat, and then you do that twice, okay? You have to times it by two. So here it says it comes out like uh, two... Hutvachim, right, which is basically a, a, a third of a namah. Because the namah is six tvachim. So it comes out two tvachim. So if you do like this, right, but you do this twice, meaning twice this size, so it comes out 24, uh, how much? Betvachim. Every tefach is eight centimeters. So it means this is already eight centimeters. So twice this is 16 centimeters. Make sense? Yes. Okay. Okay. So again, Kimlo Rocha Basit Kaful, Pishnaim double the distance between the etzba and the ama, right? When you're distancing one from another. The Oreg Shnechutin, if you're going to start weaving two chutin, right? Basically, you're totally putting the, the, the erev with the sheti, right? In the irug. Shiro Kimlo Rocha Basit Kaful, right? Just the, no, oh, you take out here Kaful, because if not, it's the same measurement as the other one. Right, so it's basically the same thing, eight centimeters, because you're only doing once, 
Okay, you have to take, that's why the kaful is in the brackets. Okay? Alma, so you see from here, given the litviya kai, since it's still fitting to come and to weave it together, shiur akitavui. It's the same shiur as the tavui. Ha'cheram is so to here, given the labedokai, since you're going to be ma'abed this skin, meaning since you're going to make the ibud on the skin, shiur okiu mu'bad. It's like it already has the same shiur of mu'bad. There's no difference in the shiur. Meaning something which is going to become right, something else, whether it was by here, by the tivui, or by the meubad, that you're coming and you're processing the skins, it's already with that shiu. Okay, that's what we're looking at. So what happens now if I don't want to process the skins? Meaning I have it the way that it is, but I'm not going to process it. So I'm alay, lo shna. There's no difference. That's what he's saying over here. There's not going to be difference right now. Okay? So says the Gemara, well, we didn't make a differentiation between if it was done mubad and not done mubad. Eight way, we're going to ask the following question. If somebody's going to take out samanim, right, of colors, right, dyes of colors, which are going to be um, soaked in order to make a dugma. So basically you're coming and this is what the painters use to make like, you know, their samples, okay? Le'ira, in order to stop, right? The Kaneha Orgim, it's called the Iria. I don't know if I have pictures of all this. No, not yet. Okay. So he says, Ve'ilu b'samanin she'enan shuim, but if we're talking about these dyes which are not going to be soaked, now we learned in Mishnah, if you're going to take out which are basically the clipot of the walnuts, so when they're still, you know, it's a red, it's a, sorry, it's a greenish uh, peel, right, of a walnut, or of the pomegranates, or a satis, which basically it's a type of a grass that takes out a blue color, ufua, or this is the type of grass that takes out a, a red color, it's even if you're going to take out a small clothing that you could come and you could make it. Um, how do you translate in English? Here it says it's pisata rigat furab birosha reshet. It's enough to, enough to dye the small cloth for the top of a woman's hat. Yeah, that's what it, okay. I thought it was going to give you an actual name, but it's this. You see, this is the Svachal machine. So uh, this is like a Reshet, this is like a, I don't know what you want to call this in English. And then on our, the hat, that's how they translated it. And then on top, they have this little tiny thing. So it's enough just to sew that. Hadrach. So it was already stated. He says, no, the reason why the, the Amoraim already said that it had to be such a color is because nobody's going to start making a dye for such a small amount, which means it makes sense. Meaning if I'm going to make a sample, it has to be worth it. I'm not going to make a sample for such a small amount. It's not worth it. So that's what the Gemara is actually saying. Okay. So second question. What about the zraim of, meaning like seeds of vegetables? When we come the zarinu before you plant them, Tanam we learn zirone gina is going to be even less than a gogeret. Yudam and Metara Omer, Yudam and Metara says, it's only only going to be chayav on five garinim levad, if I take five seeds. Yilubatar the zarinu, but after we already planted it, Tanam we learned, zevel v'chol adak, whether we're talking about fertilizer or soft sand, kedeliz bebo kelach kruv. It's enough in order to fertilize a kelach of a kruv, which is like one cluster of a kruv of the um, cabbage, right? I think they translate it usually as cabbage. Cabbage, no? Yes, cabbage. Cabbage, okay. Divra Rebbe Kiva, these are the words of Rebbe Kiva. Chachavim only chachavim say, Kedel Isabel Krisha, in order to fertilize leeks. So it comes out that you see from here that the shiur that is needed before the melacha is greater than the shiur that is needed after the melacha. Meaning, until now, we were saying that you saw that as long as you're going to use it for the same, right, I'm going to use it for the ibul. Even though I didn't process it now, it still has the same measurement. 
or the same thing for anything else, as long as I'm going to do that, so it has the same measurement. Here we're saying it's incorrect. Why is it incorrect? Because we're seeing here that there's a concept that, in essence, before and after is two different, um, two different talachot. Even though I'm going to process this, then I'm going to do it, it's two different talachot. So answers the Gemara, Ha'itman Allah, it was already said in my Papa, had the Zriya, He says, no. The Mishnah is talking about that you took out the fertilizer in order to make it fertilize. We're talking about that it was already planted. And here, the other Mishnah was talking about where you didn't plant it yet. That somebody's not going to come and take out, right, to work so much on the Zriya, which is very difficult to start planting for one little tiny seed. I Meaning it doesn't make sense. Somebody's going to do it. So therefore, you're not going to be Chayav on it. Okay? So ask the Gemara. Another question. Baretit. What about clay? Before you come and you knead it together with water. Tanya, we learned in Bright. If you're going to take bad water to the Rishut Rabbi, the Shiuram is a Ravit. The Avinam Bas, we ask Shofchin and Maichazu, what are you going to use this water, which is Shofachin? So, you could come and you could use it for clay. Meaning, not drinkable water, you're not going to drink it. So, what are you going to use it for? You could use it for, so for making clay. Vilu Batar. But after you already came and you kneaded it together, you mixed it all together. Tanya, we learned in the Brayta. Teet is kedela asod ba'em pikur. Teet is in order to make a, enough amount of a kur, right? Which is like the smallest amount. So answers the Gemara. Hata nami kedamran. There also is like we brought down the fichin adam toriach lagabel atzida. So we go pikur. Nobody will come and start making a clay or a cement or such a, ma- a small amount in order to, you know, stop at the pikur. It just, it doesn't make sense. You understand? Know so the same, basically, we're always coming down to the same concept that even though you should have been chayab for, for the smaller amount, but since nobody would make it lechatchila just for that, you're not going to be chayab in that. If it was already processed, so then you're going to be chayab even for that. But if it was never processed for that, you would never do it, so you're going to be patur for such a small amount. Okay? Another question this is the fourth question already. Tashima, we're going to bring another question. There are three different types of skins. Okay, which means when they come and they make the skins, there are three different types. Matza, chipa, the diftera. Okay, there's matza, chipa, and diftera. Let me see if I have any picture here. No, not yet. Okay, so let's see what it says over here. So it says like this. Matzah kemashmao. What does it mean? Matzah is basically you didn't process it. So it's like a matzah. You didn't process it, not with salt, not with flour, not with the liquid, which is basically, these are the three different processings of how are you me'abed, which means when you want to come and you want to process the skins, you have to do these three processes. How does it translate in English? Not with salt, not with flour, not with me'afatzim. But is there a word in yes. it with the process? It, it, it's salt, flour, and treated with gold nuts. Okay, gold nuts. But it doesn't actually say like a name in the process. It just tells no, you. No, no. Okay, fine. Fine. The kama shiuro. So how much is the shiur of this type of skins that you took outside? So tani mishol v'liyuda kidei latzur mishkolet ktana. So it's in order to cover a small mishkolet of oferet, of a plum, of a plum is a lead. So it's in order to cover a small weight of lead, okay? The kama, so how much is that? I'm gonna buy a riva de riva de It's a quarter of a liter of pumpedita. Okay, so that's the first one. Chipa, what is chipa? The meliach, it was salted, but it wasn't kamiach ulofitz, but it didn't have the kemach or the galnut. Kama shiudo, how much is the shiur? Kedetanan, as we learned in the Mishnah, that's our Mishnah, or kedel asot kamiach, in order to make a kamiach. Diftera, which is the third one, which means you already did the two processes with salt and kemach, but not with the galnut. Kama shiudo, kedel lechtov lavet get, in order to write a get on it. Tani mihat, however, we did learn. Kedel atzul bo mishkol ketana, ve'amara bai bai, se ziva dirve bo So it comes out, 
that a shiur gadol by Ora Meubad is in order to make a chamiya. And this is not like Rav Nachman, that he said that there's the same. Because one of them is to write the get, and one of them is to write a chamiya. Answers the Gemara, hatam bebishula. No, we're talking about over there that the shiur of the matzah is bebishula, when it's very, very uh, moist. Okay, so it's another type. So therefore, since it's moist, it's still fitting for it. But once it becomes dried, right, so then no, then you need the bigger shiur. Okay? So just to show you, which we're going to be learning, or you know, we're going to see this in one second. Okay, we'll see it in one second, and I'll show you the picture. Okay, fine. So then it says, It means that when you have a clothing, the clothing has to be three by three, about three tfachim, 24 centimeters squared, in order that it's fitting, that you can lie down or sit down on it. Hasak, sackcloth, arbal, arba, has to be four by four. Ha'or, by an animal, the skins, right? It's chamisha al chamisha, it's five by five. Hamapatz, if it's going to be like a, um, how do you call this, like a carpet? Shisha al shisha, six by six. Ben li midras, ben lamet. Doesn't matter what it's going to be, mekabel tumat midras, tumat met. Tani ala, so we learned it, abeg el asak ve'or b'shul tumat kacha shul hotza. So just like it's by tumat, it's by the shul of hotza. So the question is, this is obviously going against our Mishnah, but our Mishnah said that it has to be in order to make a kamiya. Now by or, we learned that it's going to be five by five tfachim. It's much more than just to make a tchamiya. So answers the Gemara, ha'hu bekortov la. The Mishnah and the Brayta there, Mesech Kelim is talking about an or, which they cooked it and it became uh, hard, like a kortov la, which is basically in order to make like a, a, a padding of a, of, a, of a table or of a chair or things like that, or of a bed. So ever since it's not fitting for anything else, that's why you need such a big shiur. But if not, then it's like Rav Nachman, that it's just to make a kamiya. Okay? Ayin teta mubet. Klaf. We learned in our Mishnah, if you want to take a klaf, it's k'deh lichnov la parashash k'tana, of in the tefillin. Okay, so it's in order to come and write out, take out a parashash k'tana in the tefillin. So it says over here like this. Okay? So, in klaf, right? Um, okay, we're going to see now. Urminhi, we have a contradiction. Klaf beduch sustus kedei lichtov alav mezuzah. It says whether it's going to be klaf, which klaf is basically the outer part of the animal. Duch sustus is the inner part of the animal. Kedei lichtov alav mezuzah. It's enough to write a full mezuzah. Now, a full mezuzah has shema, gayan, basically v'avta, and gayan shemua. Not just one parashav tefillin, which is only shema, which is v'avta, which means like this. Remember, in the tefillin, here you have four boxes, correct? Remember, this is only the Tfilin Shel Rosh, because in Tfilin Shel Rosh, each box has a different parasha. In Tfilin Shel Yad, it's one box in the middle, and it's one parasha. It's all connected. In the Tfilin Shel Rosh, it's divided by four. You have Shema Yisrael, which is Shema Ve'avta. You have Vayayim Shamua, Vayaki Ve'echa, right? And, uh, sorry, Kadesh Lichol Bechol, Vayaki Ve'echa. Okay, that's the order. There's a machloket in the order, and that's where you get the Benutam and Rashi. Okay? Now, what happens is, is that how do you write on what type of a cloth? So if you realize many years ago, the cloth, the parchment looked different. So why is it like that? So here you have like this. Here you have what's called cloth. Okay, Rashi says in cloth that it took out the klipa el yonah. So look, here this is, this is skins, which is on the side of the hair, tzada se'ah. This is on tzada basai, which is on the flesh, on the inside. So now what happens is, they split it. When they split it, okay, over here, that's the next picture, this, on this side, which is the inner part of the outer side, they're not going to write on the part where they have the hair. It's when they split this parchment, this or, on the inner side, that's called cloth. On the inner side of the basar, which means, again, you have the flesh, but they're not writing it on the inside of the flesh where it was, where it was the blood and all those things. You're doing it on the outside of the flesh. That's called doxustus. Okay, so you have two different names, klaf and doxustus. Now, this is going to be the gvil, which we're going to see, which means klafim shelanu yeshlam din klaf ekotvim alehem netzad basad. This is called gvil. The entire thing together is called gvil. And this is the klaf shelanu. So sometimes it's going to be much thicker and sometimes much thinner. It all depends whether, if they didn't split it at all, that's called gvil. If they split it, so on the inside of the one which is towards the outside, that's called klaf, on the outer side of the inner one, 
It's called Doch Sustus. Gvil is when it's attached. Okay, and they're writing on it. So the truth is it's going to have a different color and it's going to be thicker or thinner. Everything has a difference, okay? So answers the Gemara. My mezuzah. What are we talking about now, mezuzah, that in order to write a mezuzah? Mezuzah Shabbat Tfilin, which means one of the four um, megilot which are putting in the Tfilin Shalosh. That's a pshat. It doesn't mean mezuzah, a regular mezuzah that you have on your door, because that has two parashiot. A mezuzah of your Tfilin, meaning one of the parashiot in your Tfilin. So says the Gemara, the Karlo of Tfilin mezuzah, since when do you call Tfilin a mezuzah? Meaning it doesn't make sense. You're telling me mezuzah, all of a sudden, no, mezuzah of a Tfilin. Since when do you call a tefillin mezuzah? So answer the Gemara. In yes, you do call it that. Why? But Taya was learned in a brayta. Tefillin im a tefillin. What does that mean? Ritzuot tefillin im a tefillin. We're talking about the ritzuot, the straps of the tefillin with the tefillin. Metameot at yadaim. It's going to be metamed at yadaim. It's going to be metamed your hands because of truma. Right? It's going to make it tamed. If not sman, right? But if they're by themselves, which means ritzuot the tefillin, which are not connected to the tefillin to the box. And mitameot to tayadaim. They're not going to be mitameot to tayadaim. Mishimom and Yudah, Omer Mishimom and Mishimom. Says the Mishimom and Yudah, name of Mishimom. Hanogia beretzua tahor. If you're going to touch the retzua of the tefillin, you're going to be tahor. Ad sheiga baktsitza. Until you're going to touch the bite of the tefillin, where the, where the, the parashiot are. So remember, the ktsia is this part. This part. <coughs> Sorry. This part is called the ktsitsa. Okay? So this is the ktsitsa of the tefillin. Okay? So until you don't get there, you're going to be tahor. Rabbi Zaka Nishmo, Rabbi Zaka, he says, tahor ashigaba mezuzah atzma. You're going to be tahor until you actually touch the parasha itself. Okay? So here we did call the, the cloth in the tefillin, we called it the mezuzah. So here's a proof that you do call the tefillin a mezuzah also. A mezuzah of the tefillin, meaning the parashah of the tefillin. Okay? So I asked the Gemara, the Hamid Iktani Seifa, that which we learned in the Seifa, Klaf, is in order to write on a parashah Ketarash of tefillin, which is Shema Yisrael. Miklal Zadereisha, because remember, Shema Yisrael Ve'avta is a smaller parashah than Vayayim Shamoa. Vayayim Shamoa is much longer, obviously. So it says, Miklal, so obviously, the Reisha Ve'mezuzah Tzma Skinah. If we're talking about the Seifa, that the Seifa is talking about that you're writing a small parashah of the Tfilin, which means Shema Yisrael Ve'avta, so then the Reisha, obviously, when we're talking about Mezuzah, should be talking about a Mamasha Mezuzah, a real Mezuzah, right? Not just another parashah. So answers the Gemara, Hachik Tani, this is what it means to say. Klaf uduch sustus, shiuram bekama. How much is the shiur of Klaf and duch sustus? So those were the pictures that I just showed you of Klaf and duch sustus. So it says, duch sustus, is in order that you're going to write a mezuzah, which is Shema, Ve'avta, and Vayayim Shemua. Okay, remember, Shema and Ve'avta are always connected. Okay, Klaf is in order for to writing Tfilin. Which is Shema Yisrael. That's the way that it has to be done. Okay, so basically it's two different measurements. Okay. Because here it says that the Duch Sustus is not kosher for Tfilin, as we're going to bring down. So the Duch Sustus um, is only kosher for the Mezuzah. So a Mezuzah could be written on the Duch Sustus. The Tefillin has to be written on the cloth. So because of that, the Mezuzah that could be written on the Duch Sustus, so that's why it's enough to write a Mezuzah. You have to write a Mezuzah, right? But it's not enough, the Tefillin. But the Tefillin, which is written on the cloth, has to be the, the, what is enough for the Tefillin. So Amar Rav, Rav says, Duch Sustus is like cloth. Ma cloth kotvim alav Tefillin? So to Duch Sustus kotvim alav Tefillin. So it says the Gemara, one second. Just like Klaf, you write Tfilin. So to Mezuzah, you can write Tfilin. Tanam, we learned on Mishnah, Klaf, Kedel Lichtom, Prashat, Ketana, Shavit, Tfilin, which is Shema Yisrael, Klaf, In, Duxus, Tus, Lo. So it comes out that it's Mashma, that you do not use Duxus, Tus, right? So therefore, in order to write on it the Mezuzah, so it comes out that Duxus, Tus is Pasul for Tfilin. Because if it was going to be Kashed, right? So then it would have been the same as the Klaf. So it answers the Gemara, Le Mitzvah, which means... The mitzvah mina muvchad is to write tefillin on klaf and not on duch sustus. Okay? However, though, if you did do it, it's going to be kasher b'diavad. Right? Well, that means if you did do tefillin on duch sustus, it's b'diavad. Okay? It's not going to be kosher lechatchila. Another question. Tashema, we're going to learn another, uh, another question. Halachal Moshe Mitzinai tefillin ala klaf u mezuzah l'duch sustus. Halachal Moshe Mitzinai is that tefillin has to be written on klaf. 
and mezuzah is going to be written on duchsus tus. Klaf is being kom basar. So remember, the klaf is on the side of the basar, right? It's on the side of the flesh. The duchsus tus and the duchsus tus is going to be being kom sear on the part of the sear, which means that this is the exact opposite of what we just learned. So says the Gemara, le mitzvah, the same thing. Amechal Moshe Misina is only lechatchila, but the Yavad, if you change, it's going to be okay. Okay? So ask the Gemara ve'atanya, right? Shina pasul. I thought we learned in a bright that if you changed it one for another, it's pasul. It's not just the Yavad. So answer the Gemara, no, that's only a mezuzah, which means if you came and you wrote the mezuzah on klaf, it's pasul. But filin, if you change it, and instead of writing it on klaf, you wrote it on duchsus tus, it's going to be kasher be Yavad. So ask the Gemara ve'atanya in shina baze uvaze pasul. We learn mefurash on the right, if you change in this and in this, I mean, we just didn't say in one. If you change on either or, it's going to be pasul, even with the avad. And so the Gemara, no, either either mezuzah, it's on the mezuzah. We had the katvinu a klaf in kom sear, right? Either we're talking about that you wrote it on the klaf, right, betzad, which is towards the sear, or you wrote it on the duchsus tus mim kom basar, okay? And therefore, that's why we said that it's going to be pasul. Bibait ema, or if you want, you could answer shina bazel bazef. You changed it from one to another. It's going to be pasul. Is a machloket tanaim tanaihi. The tanya was we learned in the brayta shina bazel bazef pasul. The biyach hamachshid he says it's going to be kosher b'diavad. So comes that it's machloket whether it's kasher or pasul b'diavad. If Papa wants to say a third answer, Rav he holds like tanya devem nashe. The tanya devem nashe ketvala niyar. He says if you're going to write it on niyar, which is paper. Or matzlit, or on top of a chaticha bad, or on a piece of um, of uh, bad is like um, trapo. How do you say um, cloth? Cloth. Cloth. Thank you. That was the word. Cloth. It's going to be pasul on cloth or on gvil, right? So remember, the gvil was when it's together. Cloth is on one side, duchsustus is the other side. When you split it, it's not gvil anymore. So it says it's going to be kashera. So, Kitava Mai, so says the Gemara, what does it mean that you wrote it? Ilema Mezuzah, if you're going to tell me now that if you wrote it and we're talking about the Mezuzah, Mezuzah Klaf, Mikatvina, do you write Mezuzah on Klaf? Mezuzah cannot be on Klaf. And I love Betfilin, obviously we're talking about the Tfilin. So says the Gemara, but he according to you, Tfilin, do you write Tfilin on Gvil? You don't write it on Gvil. So, for obviously, we're not talking about Tfilin. And like Itanya Hi, but when we talk about Sefer Torah, because the Sefer Torah could be written. On anything. So now one more time, let's just do a summary. Sefer Torah could be written on Gvil, which is everything together. It could be written on Klaf, which is again when you split it, but it's on the inner side of the outer side, meaning that here's the hair, so it's on this side, right, of the Klaf. So you split it, this is Klaf, and on this side, which is on the flesh side, but on the outer side, is Duchsustus, is this side. So this on together, it's Sefer Torah, right? It's kosher. You split it. Klaf is this, Tfilin. Tuxustus is Mezuzah. Okay, so that's what you have each one. So t- Sefer Torah could be on all three. Tfilin, Lechatchila is on Klaf. Mezuzah, Lechatchila is Tuxustus. Bediavad, there's a machloket. If Bediavad, if you changed it by Tfilin or not. Okay? Fine. Clear until here? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. So says the Gemara, Lema Mesayale, we're going to bring a proof also to this, right? Because it says, Kayotse bot filin shebalu versabatora shebala, and osi mem mezuzah. If you have filin that started wearing out, yeah, so you can't use, or a severatora that started wearing out, you can't make from it a mezuzah of Shema Yisel Vayayim Shamoa to make it on the Y. The Fishem Moridim Gdusha Hamura Le Gdusha Kala, because severatora or filin have a higher kedusha than the mezuzot. So therefore, you cannot make it from a higher kedusha to a lesser kedusha. Tefillin have the four parashiyot. That's why it's a higher kedusha than the, the mezuzah that only has two. And all the more so the sever Torah that has everything. Okay, so that's why it's the highest level. So you have sever Torah, Tefillin, and mezuzah. It's going down in levels. Okay. So Tam, uh, the reasoning why we said is they're moridim is you can't bring it down a level. Ha moridim, but if you would bring it down a level, you're allowed to. So dichtiva mai, but what is it written on? Right? What's it written on? Because you just told me that filin are written on klaf, not dosusus. Sefer Torah could be written on gvil, klaf, or dosusus. 
So lav dechtiva duxustus. So we're not talking about that it's written on duxustus, and therefore you're going to tell me, right, that it's a proof that feeling that we're written on duxustus is going to be kosher, because if by a mezuzah it's going to be pasul if it's not a duxustus, how would you change it from a tefillin to a mezuzah? The sefer Torah you could do that for sure because the sefer Torah could be written in anything, but the tefillin, if tefillin are written lechatchil on on gvil on on uh, sorry on klaf, and if it was if it was written on duxustus it's not kosher. So how would you change it to a mezuzah? Meaning the only reason why it was pasul to change it to a mezuzah is because it has a higher kedusha. But if it didn't have a higher kedusha, it was mutad. What's going on? So the answer is the Gemara. No, ichtiva la klaf. It was written on klaf. So it says the Gemara. One second, but mezuzah klaf for me. Can you write a mezuzah on klaf? And it says the Gemara. In yes. By the time it was we learned in the Brayt, I could write a klaf on the Yom Malti B'Sulam. So I just wish you were my used to write it on klaf. Why? So according to Rabbi Meir, he used to write it on klaf. Right? Because klaf is stronger than duxustus, which means klaf parchment is a stronger form. They're both parchment, but just different names, right? It says it's stronger, it stays longer. So since it preserves for a longer period of time, that's why the Bimid used to purposely use it with that, with klaf. And that's why he used to permit it even lechatila to write it on that. Okay? So hashta dati lahachi, so now what you just said now, right? That basically since it's watched better, it's kept better for a longer time with klaf, don't tell me the duxustus is like klaf, but just say klaf is like duxustus, it's the exact opposite. Just like duxustus, you write a mezuzah, so to klaf, you're going to write the mezuzah. So, right? So therefore, that's what we just finished off by saying. Okay? Okay. So basically, he's just trying to say that we should change the lashon of the brighter to say the other way around. Um, because Rav said that klaf and duxustus are the same, but he didn't explain how. So now it comes out that it all depends on what we're talking about, you know, whether it's talking about the mezuzah that's feeling. So, okay, fine. And now we're on the two dots. So, Blina, that we continue then with the two dots tomorrow morning. Bezrat Hashem. Hazak Baruch.